Democrats hold the House, the Senate, and the presidency. It's a trifecta that, in theory, should open the door to passing a slew of Democratic legislation. In the House, Democrats lead by just eight votes, and Vice President Kamala Harris holds the tie-breaking vote in the Senate. The Senate being equally divided, the Vice President votes in the affirmative, and the concurrent resolution as amended is adopted. These narrow margins of control mean Democrats don't have a lot of wiggle room to lose votes. This gives moderate Democrats in the Senate the upper hand, because Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer can't lose their support. At the same time, progressives are pushing party goals even further left. As chair of the Progressive Caucus, Representative Pramila Jayapal is one of the leaders in this push. The policies that we advocate for are the policies that lift up the bottom, that lift up the middle, and actually bring fairness back so that the very top is, is, uh, is paying their fair share. We have an enormous amount of power. I think that the crises, the economic crisis, the pandemic, the racial justice crisis, um, have actually put even more power in the policies, in the progressive policies that we're trying to push. House progressives have more power than their counterparts in the Senate. We owe our, our political power because of young people, because of the movement for black lives, because of women, because of the working class across this country. Which is why legislation on LGBTQ rights. The bill is passed. Voting protections. The bill is passed. And immigration reform. The bill is passed can sail through. Even if progressive policies have an unlikely fate once they get to the Senate, the 91 members of the House Progressive Caucus get to voice their ideals in comparison to the standard Democratic Party platform. There are some things that progressives were fighting for 10 years ago that were considered radical that are now considered part of the mainstream. They are still the progressive ideas and they've still been pushed by the progressive movement. Then there are places where progressives really are still pushing. Take the party's push for a $15 national minimum wage. This was originally included as an item in the Coronavirus Relief American Rescue Plan. The bill is passed without objection. A motion to reconsider is laid upon the table. It passed the House, but the Senate parliamentarian said it cannot be included in the bill if Democrats were to vote under the budget reconciliation process, which meant it would pass with a simple majority rather than the regular 60 votes required. I served 36 years in the Senate. I know how hard it is to pass major consequential legislation, particularly when we only have such minor, small majorities. Democrats needed this process to get the stimulus through, so the legislation moved forward without the minimum wage hike. Ms. Cinema, Ms. Cinema, no. If we had the ability to have a simple majority vote in the Senate, we would get 15 passed with Democratic support. And maybe we'd pull over a few Republicans because it is actually very popular in Republican districts and states. So for me, it is a procedural barrier first and foremost that is stopping us from getting 15 accomplished. Progressive um, policies have populist support and that gives us so much power, frankly. Um, and you saw it with President Biden coming out with a $1.9 trillion package. You saw it with the passage of a child tax credit. That is a very progressive idea that really counters neoliberal economic thinking. It's time that we build an economy that grows from the bottom up and the middle out. The middle out.